You write a lot of relationship songs, like this next one. I remember uh, your share of me. Mm, is that yeah. is that something that happened, or were we just creative right in there? Well, I always. I, <laughs> I always, We're digging uh, deep here. I always <laughs> try we to, want the uh, personal stuff here. Well, I've learned to, I mean, the person that I wrote that song knows the songs about her. Okay. I wrote a lot of songs about this particular person. But after that, I realized never, never reveal what you wrote the song about. They're all hypothetical because you'll never live it down. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you 15 years from now, you remember that song you wrote about me? <laughs> you know, like, oh man, it's a great song. Don't ruin it for me. You know. <laughs> a lot of songs I've, I, I ref, you know, some people, you know, that, that they know that I wrote the song about them, you know, for a past relationship or whatever, and I've had a few. Um, but those are the songs a lot of times that people seem to want to hear if you look at the hit songs. Especially the person that's written about. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah they definitely want They always want to hear it. that one for me. But, uh, so I just try to hide that, you know, and, yeah. and, um, and just say this is hypothetical, you know. Mm -hmm. And I guess all of them, every song, some songs are totally happy. I've got one song that, that I wrote and, and this chick swears that, she, that I tells everybody that I wrote, and I, and I didn't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think some yeah. songs are all fiction, and but most songs have a little bit of truth, you know, some some piece of a life experience that you tie in there. There's an element in but, there somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, unless you're a, you know, storybook writer, you know, like Shel Silverstein. I think a lot of his stuff is probably <laughs> conjured up in that freaked out head of his, you right. know. Right. But, uh, well, words and music, people, this song is not about anybody. <laughs> if you think it's about somebody, it's not. It's just, it's it was total you. fiction. It was totally <laughs> made up, so don't think anything This like one's called that. Your Share of Me. Until you left me far behind 
This is Words and Music. Our guest today, Chris Cook. Ooh. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one. Thank you. Very nice. Too. I think that old Takamini you're playing can tell a few stories. <laughs> yeah. Of song. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's it's been a good one. It's, uh, I might have to go have some reconstructive surgery on it before too long. You're working on that Willie Nelson effect there on that one. Well, place. that's going to be a hole pretty soon. Yeah, it is, and it's it's. I don't want that. That's scary. Yeah. Isn't it? Well, when I bought it, it didn't have a pit guard on it. And I thought the site when I first started playing, I noticed it started to deteriorate. So I put a pit guard on it, mm. and this the pit guard was one of those cheap decal ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it started to pick right there. You know, when I'd come down, it kind of poked me or whatever. So I said I started peeling it away. You know, <laughs> I said man, I can get that thing off there. And I got right here, and it pulled the piece of the finish off. Oh, oh man! Oh yeah. God. And. Uh, I took it to a guy and he kind of dabbled some, but I liked, I loved the way it sounded without the pit guard. I remembered how warm it was, you know, so I just left it off. Yeah. But now it started to get that hole again, and um, but uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool actually. Yeah, but, it's, you know, I bought it brand new, believe it or not, about let's see, 1990. Uh, Five, ninety six, ninety five, ninety six. Bought it. So it's got all your character uh, yeah. on it. <laughs> well, t tell the story you were telling me. Yeah, it took a little vacation, did it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> somebody else had it for a while, right? Yeah, somebody stole it, and uh, it was kind of embarrassing, really. <laughs> uh, but somebody had stolen it out of the, the back of my truck, and uh, or Explorer, whatever you want to call it. You know, there's no such thing as a truck anymore, just about. But um, and. Uh, they stole this and some other gear too, but they brought this back. <laughs> they, le they left it on the doorstep. I came home from a gig one night and I saw it sitting there. I was like, "Man, did I leave a guitar out outside or something?" And uh, maybe they had a religious experience. But <laughs> yeah. You were thinking it might be a comment about your guitar, right? It was yeah, because they kept all the good stuff, you know, the Mackie powered head and the, oh, yeah. some other stuff. And but they brought but this they back, brought and back. you could tell they hadn't even. You can tell they hadn't even had gotten it out of the case. They just opened yeah. the case and said, "Ugh." Nah. <laughs> I always like to talk them any. They they got great electronics. They do, and I like this one because of the wood. It's cedar sides and backing. It's very very. It's a warm guitar. It's not a very yeah. big sounding bright guitar, but it's yeah. uh, the spruce top on it. It's it's a great guitar. Great guitar. I've, I've gigged. I've gigged with it. This has been my main guitar for a long time.